Hey friends, uh, it's Shane at HowToWrench.com today, and we have a special guest in the house who's out of camera right now, but here is uh, his engine. is a project he bought off uh, eBay. Anyway, while taking it apart, one of the studs pulled out of the case, and I'm going to show some close-ups here in a second, but what this video is really going to be about, this is going to be on how to remove this flywheel, and I do it differently than every service manual says how to do it. So quite often the service manual is going to tell you to take the top end off and that's how far you got and then realize, well, I need special tools. And then he said, well, I'll just have how to wrench, uh, go ahead and do it. But the, I, I think there's a much better, safer way to do that. So why don't you stay tuned, come right back, and we're going to show you how to do this without hurting things, especially if you're looking at restoring old motorcycles and you don't have any chance if you break apart, you're gonna to be totally, you know, totally screwed. So, come right back. Hey, what are you doing? Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're gonna be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. All right, here is the problem at hand. To pull this rotor, we thread in a. a you have to take the nut off, of course, and then we thread in this special tool. This is left-handed thread. And I, this is, I'm not ready for this, I'm just showing you real quick here. So you need to put grease on these. And then what happens is, you're supposed to hold this and smack this with a hammer, depending on the style that you have. What's going to happen is this has the potential to move. And with the cylinder off, we take that chance of smacking the piston or causing damage, breaking a skirt off on the case. All It's full of bad all the way around, so I don't care for that. A lot of times what the manual will have you do is they'll have you actually take and you put these bars basically underneath here. There's a special tool for this. And then when you rotate this down, that creates a wedge or a lock so that it can't move anymore. But you imagine if you're smacking this with a hammer, that's putting a lot of stress on those aluminum piston skirts and the case. And, and, and once again, I just don't like it. That's, a, that's a, another, in my opinion, uh, bad way to do that. The other thing that you might see in your service manual is they might have you have uh, both sides of the motor off and then have you hold this side and then try and remove this. That way this won't move around. So let me show you what I would do. All right, we're going to back up a couple steps, and we're going to start by slipping the cylinder on, and this can actually be done a lot faster and easier if your piston rings are off. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the head on. I don't need gaskets or anything. I'm not going to be cranking anything down, but the whole point of doing it this way is that the piston is completely supported. I won't break a skirt. I can't hurt anything, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to protect parts. That way, because the thing we don't know is, we don't know if this is seized on here. We don't have any clue of whether that's going to come off easy or if it's going to be a son of a gun and take some real effort. Uh, the other thing I'm really trying to be cautious of is to not hurt the end of the crankshaft. So these are all the little tips to not cause any more trouble. So what I'm going to do now is set this up. I'm going to go ahead and lower the piston. Okay, below the exhaust port and now it doesn't matter what you use you can just take some rope or whatnot and I'm actually just going to shove rope in here get as much as you can in here we're going to make it so that as I turn that motor over it'll hit the rope it'll lock up and that's what's going to actually hold it for us And then I can focus all my attention on smacking this uh, with the tool with a rubber mallet there and I'm not having to worry about supporting a piston or rod or I don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, I think that's enough. I'm just going to try to see. if you're, This is a pretty heavy duty rope. If you're using something real thin, it, it will just shear it off. So you want to you stuff it in there pretty good. Okay. Now you'll see some pennies on the bench. That's another way that you can take, and they make special tools for this, and you could jam them in between the, the two gears there is a way to potentially lock the motor. So we just wanted to show you that as well. We're not going to use this technique right now if we don't have to. We're going to focus on the rope doing the trick for us. What we have to think about is that when we don't have the nut on here, and we take and we push this center point against this, 
we could flare that or spread that out and actually hurt the crankshaft. We want to do everything we can, like I said, to avoid any damage on that. So what I'm going to do is definitely lots of grease, and whenever possible, I want to go ahead and put the nut back on to protect it from flaring, but in this case we can't. Our nut's just way too thick. This puller has to go all the way down inside here, so it grabs all the real estate. We want to grab as many threads of this puller as we can, and the old uh, leave the nut on there so it doesn't flare doesn't work. Before I go ahead and put the puller on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap some grease around here, get it pretty good, and I'm going to take a copper crush washer, whatever I could get to fit, and I've got this one to fit. That's going to act as a sacrificial piece instead of me pushing directly against the crankshaft. So we're going to go ahead here, and uh, this is left-handed thread on this tool. What I like to do is I like to bottom it out and then back it up just to turn. We're going to thread this in. Friends, there you have it. There's a way of how to pull these rotors or your flywheels uh, without damaging anything else. So especially if you're dealing with something. So it's a 1975. We're trying to really use some caution to not create other problems. So if you haven't done it yet, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Uh, if you got any comments to add your two cents or maybe it's something you do that can make this uh, content even better, please do so. Uh, 2019's really starting off exciting. We're going to have some raffle prizes and giveaways from uh, some of our sponsors of the product they give us. So stay tuned. I'm going to get back to work. As always, make it a great day and keep wrenching.